Hi, my name is Peter, and I'm a prisoner at Mary Queen of the Apostles Parish in Salem, Massachusetts. This is my weekly reflection on the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. This Sunday, we continue to read from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. The church has its first read from the book of Exodus about the manna that came down from heaven. I also think we should remember last week's first reading in Gospel. So, I'll quickly summarize what happened in today's first reading, then last week's first reading in Gospel, to set the stage to explain today's Gospel. In today's first reading, we look back on when the Israelites were released from Egypt. They ended up traveling in the desert for 40 years. Shortly into their journey, they started complaining, and God provided birds for meat and manna, a kind of bread, to eat. Each day they had to gather the bread from the ground, except on the Sabbath. And this happened for the remainder of their journey. Last week's reading was about the prophet Elisha, who was given 12 barley loaves and had his servant present it to 100 people. When they had eaten, there was some left over. So then in the gospel that we read last week, Jesus was given five barley loaves and two fishes from a little boy and then fed thousands, and there was some left over. So the crowd thought of Jesus as at least a prophet, as important as Elisha. Which then brings us to today's Gospel. Jesus went from the mountain where he fed the thousands to the town of Capernaum, where he was teaching at the synagogue. The crowd catches up with him there. So a quick side note. Sometimes it helps to read larger sections of the Gospels than what we hear in the readings of Mass. That way you can catch the timing of events and other details better. So in today's and next week's Gospel, it helps to know that the speech that Jesus is going to give to the crowd happens the very day after Jesus fed thousands, and it's the same crowd. The crowd clearly thought Jesus was important. They still weren't sure how important. So they catch up with him at the synagogue. Now, the exchange between the crowd and Jesus kind of goes like this. You're really here because I fed you yesterday, not because you believe I'm a prophet. You should work for food that gives you eternal life. How do we do that? Believe in the one God sent. What sign can you do that we can believe in you? Our ancestors were given manna. Moses didn't give them that bread. God did. The bread of God comes from heaven and gives life to the world. Then give us this bread, please. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Uh, what? Well, today's gospel doesn't actually give the crowd's reaction. Next week's gospel continues that exchange, so we'll talk about it more next week. But anyhow, you can imagine how the crowd would be confused when they asked for something that they pictured to be like manna. And then Jesus says, I'm it, come to me, believe in me. Especially where the crowd was from, the same place that Jesus grew up. So it seemed important to talk about what it means to come to Jesus and believe in Jesus as used in this gospel passage. The original word in Greek, translated as come to Jesus, has many possible meanings, but might be understood as meaning to approach Jesus, whether physically, spiritually, or even in time. And the original Greek word translated as believe has a connotation of trust, not just merely accepting in our minds that something's true, but having trust in Jesus, that he is who he says he is, and he will do what he says he will do. So when you worship at Mass this Sunday, whether in person or virtually, whether receiving communion or not, or performing a spiritual communion. Consider how we approach Jesus in trust. We trust that through the bread and wine as offered at Mass, 
he becomes present to us as the bread of life. We trust that if we approach and eat this bread, that Jesus gives us eternal life. So may God bless you and see you next week.